black people are emotional in a lot of I mean, human beings are emotional in, in a lot of ways and if you can appeal to the emotional side of them especially people who have been disenfranchised for so long it makes them it makes you feel as though um it makes you feel that there's a relationship there that really doesn't exist mm -hmm. right and, and that's the only thing i can credit that that particular passage to because that passage right there that just gave me kind of broke my heart uh, and so i just <laughs> you know what do you say to something like that but then when something like that is used as the basis to support and um to 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 support the status quo particularly the economic status quo let's forget about the criminal justice baggage right let's completely forget about the the legacy from arkansas the the legacy of supporting um uh, the confederacy let's forget about all the identity politics connected to it those types of stories and narratives are used to maintain the economic status quo that has been consistently gutting black wealth for at minimum the last 40 years right black wealth has always been raped in america right throughout history but but the trickle down economic policies of reagan have just come in and 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 people act as though you know they act as though that trickle down just took a vacation during bill clinton or neoliberalism took a, a vacation with bill clinton and president obama when in actuality neoliberalism was hyper activated right it just it was like neoliberalism liberalism on cocaine when with nafta and now with tpp but as long as they can connect with us emotionally about black damn ips then we can sustain the status quo that is hurting us so so yvette what is the solution and and this is like asking what's the solution to uh uh peace in the middle east but what what's the solution well, with the blackness leadership uh, uh you know i'm i'm a i'm like i'm i'm a you know in terms of i'm i like strategy I'm not a person who watches war films or anything like that, you know, you know, but I, I, I watch a little civil war every now and again. And I think the first thing you have to do if you're in battle and you're having problems and, and you know, the, the enemy keeps getting your battle plans and keeps, you know, keeps, keeps, you know, squashing you. The first thing you got to do is find your traitors and get rid of them. Mm. And so that's what I think about in terms of the black misleadership class. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you, I think you, I think you have to run people against those people. And yep. I think you have to get rid of those people. I think you have to. I think you have to actually make those people pay. Now, that, now listen. It, this is a corrupt system. So that the, these people are go, some, they're going to be in somebody's pocket. Yep. But you can't be in somebody's pocket against my best interest. You better be in somebody else's pocket. You know, you you can't be in the pocket of a payday lender. You right. can't be in the Come pocket on. of a private prison industry. You can't be in the pocket of Wall Street. You're gonna have to find another pocket. So right. I think, I think for me. I think that's I think that's the issue. I think we have to get rid of these people. Some of these people have been around a very long time. Some of these people are very comfortable, far too comfortable. And I think we have to get rid of them. I don't think there's any way you can do because these people, you know, the, the politicians are the first thing. But the second thing is we have to stop listening to other people, whether it's the pastor, whether it's whether it's your friend who used to work in D.C., whether it's whoever. I mean, I think we have to start re-educating ourselves. And I think we have to start actually reading about this stuff and not turning up for politics just when it's election time. Like, no, like in people. I had somebody tell me, well, you know, Americans work harder. You know, we work we work 40 hour weeks and, you know, we, we you know, uh, uh, really like 60 a lot of times, you know, much harder than other people in other parts of the world. And that's true. But when I think about the fact that black sharecroppers, you know, organized in, in you know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the early part of the, you know, the, the early part of like 19th century or whatever. When I think about that, it I don't have a whole lot of sympathy. That's mm -hmm. just how I feel about it. I think if they had time to do it, you have time to do it. You have time to watch Real Atlanta Housewives, you know. Real Housewives of Atlanta, you you have time to watch that football game on Sunday. You're not gonna miss the big game, are you? But you don't have time to crack open, you know, you know, ten books a year. Mm. Abs uh, that's why I had to get you on here. All right, so I don't know how much longer I got you on because there's a, a quick pivot that I want to make on on this particular.